information technology as a whole takes care of all the technology in county government from the PC to the phone system to the two-way radio system. Two-way radio is what I take care of. Today was basically a troubleshooting day here. We're having a problem with a piece of equipment up the tower. Uh, that piece of equipment gives us a, a, a secondary backup connection down to the animal shelter. This link provides them a backup means of uh, having telephone and, and network connection down there. And so we started having problems with it a couple of weeks ago. We've been checking things here and there, trying to figure out what the trouble was. We had tested the cable earlier and this cable tested okay, so we thought that our problem was at the top. Uh, today, Jason climbed the tower. Uh, Jason's one of our tower climbers. He's certified through uh, a, an independent uh, organization to climb, has all the safety knowledge and, and all the safety equipment. After we did our safety briefing today, he went up the tower and once he got up there, we discovered water inside the cable. So even though the cable had tested okay before, it's a pretty good sign that we've got a cable problem because water's supposed to be on the outside, not the inside. So now we'll get a new stretch of cable and come back and replace that cable and that should fix our problem. It's my job to make sure that when somebody calls 911 and a deputy, uh, a fire department, or an EMS unit is dispatched, that those folks can get that radio call. The dispatcher answers the 911 call, takes the information and then dispatches the people out to that call. And what we do is make sure that the radio system is working so that that dispatch goes out, that the pagers on the firefighter's belt go off, that the deputy in the car can talk to dispatch to get information on what's going on, or that the EMS unit that's in route can, can get directions and talk to the people that are on the scene over the radio to find out what's happening there. Most of the day, the most average day, is we'll do, uh, we'll try to do some maintenance, some preventive maintenance. We'll go do some, some uh, site visits. We can usually only get to one or two sites a day, but we always have to be prepared and ready to drop everything at a moment's notice and go respond to a, a, a radio problem somewhere. Uh, we may have a problem with one of our microwaves or one of the things on the mountains or whatever, and we have to be able to, to respond to that no matter what's going on. So as we're planning the day, we always try to keep that in the back of our mind to be ready to go at a moment's notice. Because it is now a technology system, the project is being led by the Information Technology Department, but it is very much owned by the Public Safety Departments. But we're just trying to give them a support system that will allow them to better do their jobs and better communicate and move us where we need to be in the future. We are replacing uh, what's called an, an ODU, short for outdoor unit. And that's a, um, it's essentially a point-to-point -point radio that's mounted on the back of a microwave dish. So it's up on the, it's on the dish on the tower. And Jason is up there now uh, switching that. This is one of our uh, microwave hop sites. The microwave is used to connect the various radio sites together. And this one actually connects three sites together. That's why we call it a hop. We don't really have any uh, two-way radio equipment here, only the microwave stuff, and it all fits in this outdoor enclosure. Jason has uh, got the switch out complete up there on the piece of equipment up top, and 
we just uh, hook the power back up to the piece in here that talks to that piece up there. And I'll use the computer now to get the configuration finished up. This is an example of the, of the diagnostics that the equipment does for us. It's telling me that this one was offline, off the air for a little while, for what, five minutes or so, 10 minutes. So when, when we're troubleshooting, we can use these, these tools remotely. Uh, and this is a good example of, of how we've employed technology to save us a lot of time and get a really good handle really quickly on where our problem is and what the problem is without having to drive literally from one end of the county to the other. So it saves us a lot of time and um, it helps us keep our systems up. Right now we're, um, we've got everything powered back up and we're uh, using, the, uh, using the remote interface here to evaluate the reliability of the link just to make sure that that it's functioning the way it's supposed to. We shoot for a reliability of 99.99%. Nothing's perfect. We'll, we'll never get to 100%. Uh, as long as we're human and we're using stuff made by humans, it'll never be 100%. <laughs> and we about once a month go through and look at all of our, all the technology that at least measures uptime to make sure that, we, that we're hitting that mark. That's the ODU, the outdoor unit. That's the the tower top part of the microwave point-to-point -point radio, and that's the part that is bad. It's uh, functioning partially, but uh, but not at 100%. It's, uh, so we brought it down. We got our spare one in place up there, and this one will be boxed up, sent off to the manufacturer this afternoon for re repair and replacement. Every time we visit a site, we look to see what things could happen to that site, what, what could happen to, that would take it off the air. Uh, we, we check all of our grounding, we check uh, antenna mounts and things like that, just to make sure that it's as rugged and reliable as it can be. When a storm comes, that generates the highest call volume for public safety, especially the fire service folks. So our system has to be able to absorb the surge of calls for that storm, but it also has to be able to survive the storm itself. So everything that we have is ruggedized, and the, and the way that we install it and the way that we maintain it has to also be ruggedized, especially against weather. Storms used to cause us a lot of problems, but we've tried to, uh, to ruggedize all of our installations and ruggedize all of our equipment. Uh, so storms don't give us quite the trouble that they used to. Um, but that's one of the things that we often deal with. We always try to keep one eye on the weather. If we have a site that's, that's offline, that means the area that it serves, uh, the community of Fairview, for example, could be without uh, public safety radio coverage. That means that uh, fire, sheriff, and EMS personnel operating in that area would not have communication back to their dispatch. So if they needed additional help, if they need to speak to talk to each other over the radio, they wouldn't be able to do that. But at each site we have an emergency generator and that is essentially a gasoline or diesel engine that runs a, an electrical generator and it powers everything that's at the radio site. We have an advanced uh, warning system on each generator and it, it feeds us the generator actually feeds us information over our email system and lets us know how it's doing, uh, problems that could be coming up, you know, if it sees a, an operating temperature sneaking up or something like that. It sends us an email so that we can react to it before the generator quits. My name is Dave Ligotti. I'm a jazz singer. I play in venues in the Asheville area here now. After the ordinance was mandated to have non-smoking venues, my health has definitely improved. My voice range has increased. I even had positive comments from smokers who admitted that although they smoked cigarettes, they still didn't like sitting in a room that was just emanating with cigarette smoke. It's very wonderful to play in a smoke-free environment. Did you know that the Buncombe County Public Library System has story times for children of all ages? 
When children are read stories and interact with the storyteller, they expand their vocabulary and establish a love of reading at a young age. If your child hasn't experienced these interactive story times, now is a great time to start. There are four different story times offered at all county libraries. School age story time is for six to 12 year olds. Preschool story time is for three to five year olds. Toddler time is an interactive story time for children aged 18 months to three years old. Finally, Mother Goose time is a lively language enrichment story time for four to 18 month olds. To find out what story times your local library offers and their times, please visit buncombecounty.org library. Hello, my name is Carol Peterson. I'm a Buncombe County Commissioner and I'm excited to be here to let you know that we have some horses that are available for adoption through the Asheville Humane Society. If you're interested in adopting or fostering some of these beautiful animals, what we need for you to do is to contact the Asheville Humane Society and they will put you in touch with the proper folks. Thank you so much. In the past, while I was at EMS, I managed the project that, of the radio system that we have now. This new project is much more technologically advanced. Uh, we're, we'll have uh, 12 radio sites. It'll be a, a fully digital system, which means there aren't any analog uh, transmissions. There's not, you know, there's not like a cable that you could tap into and hear a person's voice or whatever. It's all digital from the time the dispatcher speaks into the microphone until it comes out of the officer's radio and vice versa. So it's very advanced. Um, one of the big advantages to that is that it's, it's very clear communication. It's crystal clear all the time. Improved communication between all of the um, public safety officials, interoperability between the municipalities, fire departments, law enforcement, um, and just overall a better communication tool which is delivered through IP which does get away from the proprietary radio systems that we have had in the past and it gives us a much better way to plan for the future on how we can continue to achieve the communication needs of radio. Right now our sites are in West Buncombe, Fairview, Skyland, Barnardsville, and Alexander, and then we have one downtown here at the courthouse. We are adding to that Swannanoa, Broad River, Upper Hominy, Sandy Mush out in Leicester, Mount Olive. So we'll have much better coverage. We're, we're having to do that for a couple of reasons. One is a federal mandate is making us change the, the radio emissions that, that our system produces. They're doing that because of overcrowding in the, in the spectrum where we are. That change in emission causes the signals to be uh, weaker. They, they don't travel as well at the new emission standard. So we know that our coverage, while it's marginal already and non-existent in, in many areas of the county, is going to get much worse. So in order to counteract that, we're going to have to add sites anyway. Uh, because of the partnership we're in with Cassidian Communications, we're able to not only add sites, but, but really upgrade the equipment and upgrade the system in a way that we wouldn't be able to afford otherwise. The Radio 700 system was a gift to us from, the, from Cassidian, which is the infrastructure that we will actually put on the towers on the mountains. What we had to do is we had to come up with um, placement of towers to determine what coverage we would have in the county. We're going up to our new tower site at Flat Top Mountain. It is replacing an existing tower site that we lease on. This is going to be a tower we own. And we're going to gain about a 100 feet, 110 feet of tower height. And we're going to be looking at the foundation. It's, the foundation is about ready to be poured. And we're, we're going to look and see, they just get an idea of the size of it and what the details are with that. This is a flat top mountain. We'll be building a 180 foot self-supporting tower here. And in this hole, they will 
be building the foundation. So just to give you an idea, this, this will be filled to, to the, the rim up there with concrete and the steel reinforcing bars. This is the, the engineers determined this is the amount of foundation necessary to support and counterbalance the 40,000 pound tower. That is the current tower we're using, which is an 80 foot tall tower. We will be replacing it with this one that is 180 foot tall. For basis of comparison, this tower right here, I believe is 150 feet. So it's gonna be 30 feet taller than that one. It'll be used for our new 700 megahertz P25 public safety radio system. It is one of the 12 sites. And also this is a microwave link between our high top tower and our Busby tower in South Asheville. All of our towers have to have a network connection with one another and so this one is a critical hop. The towers come in different categories and this one to, to withstand different weights of equipment, antennas, loading, also at the expectation of ice and wind. This is our highest tower site and has the highest potential wind speed and therefore this is the heaviest grade of tower that can be purchased because this is a uh, roughly 4,600 feet in elevation and the, the wind gusts here have just necessitated us using the heaviest grade of tower. Once the tower is built, this will provide radio coverage to the Fairview area primarily. The, the tower we have currently, we're leasing space on a tower up here that is 80 feet, I believe. And so we'll be gaining an extra 100 feet of transmitting height. And that is going to give us significantly better coverage and antenna propagate, propagation. The big challenge that we have is our terrain. Uh, radio, radio signals are by and large line of sight. So we know how difficult it is to stand in downtown Asheville and see to Fairview or stand in Biltmore and see to Arden. You just, you can't do that because there are mountains in the way. Same thing because we can't see that, radio signals can't make that trip either. So we have to have antennas at radio sites in those communities, in those far off areas. Because of that, we have to have more sites than a county of our size would normally need because we've got a terrain challenge. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that.
replacing a radio tower is, is, is sometimes difficult. I mean, while they're very much needed and most people understand that 911 and radio and public safety is very important to the community, there's also a lot of people that don't understand radio towers and steel structures and some of our highest areas. So trying to find the land where we could actually construct the sites that would give us the coverage we needed has probably been one of the overall challenges. So the first thing we do is to look at areas where we need more coverage. And when we identify those areas that we need coverage, we look at population density and parcel density. Then we start looking for property just basically on the computer. Once we identify a couple of candidate sites, we uh, make contact with property owners and go to those sites if we have agreement from, from them and look at the terrain. When Brian or the department is looking at property that, I, that the county wants to acquire, we have to make some initial assumptions and investigations into the property. So we look to see if there's right of way. The right of way is probably the number one item and there are properties that we've looked at where we've had to talk about possibly acquiring right of way. Uh, once we once we're on the property, we're looking for, you know, does it look like it's good soil? Certainly we do hire an engineer once it gets to the um, more uh, definite phase of property acquisition. And, but we can see certain things when we're hiking the property. Does it look like there have been slides or scarps on the property? Many times we can't build on, on property either because of st uh, the steepness of the grade where you can't put a road in. You can find the perfect site, and we found several of them that work tower-wise for uh, seeing each other, but uh, logistically impossible to get a road to it or just uh, fiscally uh, just cost too much. We might look at a, a topographic map of the property, look at some slope analysis of the property, and then um, I'll make some initial maps so that we can actually go out and either hike the property or drive the property depending on the access to see um, where a good tower site on the property might be. Once we identify a candidate site, we then do forecasting models. So we look at uh, propagation analysis, uh, computer model with ourselves and our, and our third party engineering group to determine if that's actually going to, you know, what kind of coverage we're going to get. It's just a computer model that predicts how well you're going to cover an area. It's a way to, to make sure you're not you know, wasting time or wasting money, wasting uh, resources, improperly locating a tower. Once we do a forecasting, a forecasting model, we um, then underlay population density, parcel density, and then call for service. So we go back into our, our computer aided dispatch system and look at the previous two years and put put the calls for service underneath so that we know that we're adequately covering covering an area. We go out into the field, uh, find out what the GPS coordinates are of that mountaintop, and then it goes back to a computer program that uh, makes sure that each tower basically can see each other uh, because that's critical in what we do. And uh, it also helps for uh, not only radio communications, but if we're trying to pass data, the towers have to be able to see each other. So if, if we find a site in Sandy Mush, that works good uh, to see back north and east and uh, everything works out well. We contract with a local engineer. We uh, take a tower design that's been provided to us by IT and that's dealing with the height of the tower and that tells us what size foundation we're going to need to hold this thing down uh, on top of a mountain. You don't really try to build a foundation for a tower to keep it from sinking. You really build a base on it to keep it from tipping over in high winds. Once the foundation is complete, then the, uh, a tower company comes in, a construction uh, uh, company comes in and actually stacks the steel for us. From there, it's, it's up to us to install antennas and equipment at that site.
We were currently on a radio system that had reached end of life, and there's lots of mandates out there around narrow banding and some different um, things that we're coming up against that we're making our radio system run into some technical difficulties that was going to be hard for us to achieve. Um, with the narrow banding on our UHF and VHF sites, we were still going to need to put in more towers in order to get the coverage that's appropriate for public safety. With Cassidia giving us this 700 system, this made it a good time because it was a huge savings to taxpayers because, I mean, the system that we're being gifted is probably in excess of $4 million. Um, but with that, we needed to re-engineer and re-figure out which of our current sites could be used and what additional sites we needed to put up and put in place so that we would have the coverage needed for public safety. We support all the public safety communications, whether it's a dispatch or whether it's uh, a firefighter on the scene that needs additional help or, God forbid, a, a deputy pinned down under his car with gunfire. We need them to be able to call for more help, call for resources, and communicate with one another. I've been a, a Buncombe County employee for 30 years. I'm really proud of that. I uh, did uh, 29, uh, right at 29 years at EMS. Uh, worked as a field paramedic to begin with and uh, moved up into the training office. Uh, had some emergency management responsibilities there too. So now what I do is support the public safety radio systems. We see all the public safety agencies as our customers. Uh, the fire departments, all the county fire departments, every sheriff's deputy, uh, every paramedic. We see all those folks as our customers. And it's important for us to provide them top-notch emergency service if that's what they need. Whether they're on the scene of a, a search mission or on the scene of a car wreck, whatever it is, uh, we, we take a lot of pride in providing them really fast and efficient service. I have a little bit of an idea of, of what they need communications-wise. And I know the frustration that when you push that button and it doesn't work, and you're tempted to throw the radio a, a, across the road, and I'm glad to be able to bring, to bring that perspective into the technology department.